what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of that Dynamite Review Show on the Technology News Talk. I know you guys missed us. I know it's been um that been two weeks. We uh we had a week off for um uh, for for Thanksgiving, and um we also had a, a, a week, another week off last week because um I was working the um the the Art Basel. You know, it's that time of year. Um, in the first week of December, that here in Miami, they give out uh, like art art displays and, and, and exhibits and everything. So yeah. And that's where people come out of town to come to Miami and uh, to enjoy this uh, uh, art festival. And we so yeah, it's been hectic, there, but um, but hey, we back. It was great. Yep, it was a great dynamite show. Uh, uh, this week, this week is a uh, I would say, um, a go home show for Final Battle, which is this Saturday, and a build up to Winter is coming and uh, next week. But uh, before we get into that, let's welcome, uh, as always, our lovely co-host, Mr. Leland Bedford. What's up, bro? What is up, everybody? Yeah, you're right, Trico. This was kind of like a double go-home show, in a way, because uh, Final Battle and then also Winter is Coming, which they kind of make it like their kind of special event, almost like a paper, like a free pay-per-view, almost. So, yeah, this is like a double go-home show. And boy, was it a jam-packed show last night. They really tried to get a lot in last night with all of the Ring of Honor stuff and all of the current AEW uh, storylines. But yeah, really fun episode. I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, but before we get into it, let's do, let's do some catching up, bro. How was your Thanksgiving week? Man, Thanksgiving was good. We had some friends come through, hang out. I had barbecued some chicken and made some dressing. And my wife made some delicious foods as well but now we had a really good thanksgiving and we're looking forward to christmas how oh, about yeah. you oh yeah for sure um you know i went down to orlando uh, for, for thanksgiving uh spent a day down in um at, at universal but that, that was always good and nice uh, nice yeah i'll be back in orlando for for new year's uh, but we'll go over dizzy from there oh sweet that's you know what i might steal that next year that whole thing you guys just did i might steal that for my next year plans all right, all right. So, um, so, so, yeah. This dynamite episode was a go was a go home show for uh for final battle, which is this Saturday, and also the the build up show to next week, which is um the you know, where winter is coming. So, um, and speaking of winter is coming, uh, we start off, uh, they start off dynamite with the dynamite diamond ring uh battle royal. Now, this year was different. Normally in a, in a battle royal, you you get the ring automatically, but the current ring holder MJF is not in this match. So what they did here is whoever wins this battle royal uh, on Dynamite will face MJF in a separate match for the uh, Dynamite uh, the Diamond Ring. So um, the uh, so the participants in this battle royal was Jungle Boy, Ricky Starks, Dustin Rhodes. Ethan Page, Lee Moriarty, Orange Cassidy, Kit Sabian, Matt Hardy, The Butcher, Sean Dean, Dunn Castle, and Brian Cage. What a lineup of dudes, right? Um, a lot of great little moments for some of these guys during this match. Um, I see a uh, future star. Uh, future AEW star in this match. Uh, but what did you think about this match? What do you think about this battle royal? Uh, it definitely had a lot of stories um, in this match, especially when it comes to um, Ethan Page and, um, and Matt Hardy. Yeah. Uh, this one mm -hmm. uh, um, story there. Uh, they had one with um, the with Orange Cassidy and um, and Kid Sibian because they, they have a rivalry with the All Atlantic uh, the, the ch Championship. And uh, yeah, so. It was basically a lot of rivalries here, but um, we kind of guess uh, uh, we we all kind of guess who was going to win this match, but um, and that's we'll get to that in this uh, in a uh, right now because um, Ricky Starks and Page were the final two um uh, in the match as Starks was about to hit a tornado DDT, uh, missed a missed a spear, and Page hit a, a roundhouse kick. Page went to toss uh, Starks over, but Starks held on to the top rope. And as Paige of the was eliminated, as soon as um before the the announcer can even say your winner Ricky starts, MJF's music immediately hits. So MJF came out and he said, uh, uh, next week 
he'll be a four-time, 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 four-time Dynamite Diamond champion. He calls Stars dridgingly shits and quote the rock saying Stars is a dollar is a dollar store uh, Dwayne. MJF calls Stars the pebble. I feel like that was like a, like a Flintstone joke there, but um, who said he was sent back to Billy Corn's NWA on YouTube? MJF hits his catchphrases before starts uh, uh, grab the mic and call him, "Hey, Matt's pad," and a fifth ring, Roddy Piper. Stars Burberry lift up MJF from the head to toe, talking about his cheap suits, cheap shoes, and cheap heat. But um, let me just say <laughs> this. So, let me ask you a question. Who do you think wears the better shoes? MJF or Ricky Starks? They both wear ridiculous looking shoes. Um, Both of these guys are great dressers. And I think this might be the first chance for Tony Khan to ever do a uh, runway match or a runway off um, between like how they did like in Zoolander against the two models. So, um, yeah, a lot of similarities between these guys, but I think Starks has a style that I like, and then also MJF has a style that I like, but both sharp dressers. Yeah, and I can get um why MJF say oh uh Ricky Starks said emulated the rock because uh back then when he was uh on the FTW champion, he always had the uh the the, the dress shoes, dress pants, and then uh the five dollar five dollar shirts. Five dollar shirt. Yeah, the cool thing about I did like how MJF. Okay, let's first off, let's set everything back up. Let me go back. So let me go back. Dope moment with Dalton Castle and the boys in the Battle Royal. Uh, they were in Austin, Texas, so that is definitely their type of wrestler and their type of character. By the way, also big shout out to the Austin crowd because those guys was hyped the whole night, and they really made it a great show to watch. The crowd. Was in it. That's like such an AEW crowd. Um, and I think that's the thing that it, it kind of reminded me of like old school AEW, the reasons why I love this company. So, like for me last night, just reminded me of all those good reasons why I like this company. Um, <clears throat> but really good moment for with Don Castle and the boys. Um, good storytelling with um, Ethan Page and Matt Hardy. And the crowd was totally on Ricky's side. He lives in Austin, Texas. So they definitely was on his side. Everything MJF said was spot on. I've been waiting for these guys to be able to go uh, one-on-one on the mic. Because both of them are great talkers. And when Ricky Starks was standing there, he did kind of look like The Rock a little bit. So it definitely kind of helped what MJF was saying. But I can I can tell that Ricky Starks was right. I can tell that Ricky Starks was ready for this moment and he wasn't going to drop the ball. His promo was phenomenal. From the first word that he said, uh, listen here, Maxi Pad, and the crowd went off with him. Um, the crowd immediately jumped on that. Um, and that's such a great way to just kind of shut down everything MJF said. MJF, I think, will meet his match in Ricky Starks when it comes to promos, you know? I think Ricky Starks is a talker. He is a shooter. He is funny. If you haven't seen any of his YouTube promos, guys, go watch his promos um, about the stroke daddy. Um, But go watch Ricky Starks on YouTube. This dude is hilarious. Man, he can really kill it in the ring and on the mic. Look at his NWA stuff. Um, So I think Max has met his match a little bit when it comes to promos. Because Ricky is going to take it to him. Now, sometimes last night, Ricky let the emotions kind of take him. And it was a couple of moments that could have been cleaner. I'm pretty sure he's going to watch the tape back and kind of learn that. But they're putting him in the spotlight. They're putting him next to their top heel. <clears throat> so Ricky Starks is in, in the area to be their top baby face right now. Which I think would be, this is such a nice a new rivalry. You know, um, I think a lot of the rivalries we've been watching have been kind of stale lately, like the um, Combat Club versus JBS. I think we all are ready for that to end. I think that wrestlers are ready for that to end. And hopefully at Final Battle, it is actually the end. Uh, we'll talk about what's in store for the uh, Blackpool Combat Club later on. But um, this was 
a great new rivalry that we can find. You know, like um, two sharp dressers, two egomaniacs, two narcissistic, you know, crap holes. Um, but now Ricky Starks is a baby face and he's all about the people believing in him. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two go at it. I think we're going to, I think we're in store for a lot of battle of the words, a lot of battle of the mics. And hopefully they put on a hell of a show in the ring. Yeah, I agree with you a lot. <laughs> um, again, yeah, uh, the Texas is one of those states for a great um, uh, wrestling state because, uh, uh, you know, the crowd is going to uh, give it all, especially when, when it comes to matches. And um, and I do agree that um, Ricky uh, MJ has finally met his match and Ricky Starks because, because there's not a lot of people that can shut up MJF. And Ricky Stark w- w- is, is one of those people uh, in those promo. So, um... To continue on uh, well, well, what he said, MJF was always letting people down while Starks continue, c- constantly delivers. And next week, he will shut up MJF, sm- uh, smack the mole off his neck, and take his title. MJF immediately went low, tried to win for the ring punch, but Starks uh, dark and hit a spear out of, his sh- out, of, out of his shoes and then held the title for a huge o- ovation. Now, Couple of things uh, that, that that you mentioned, um, MJF and Ricky Starks, one of the pillars here in AEW. Now, do I see Ricky Starks winning the title next week? No, but they can always go back uh, um, in the, the next a few months or a year down the road. They can always go back to this rivalry because we need um, uh, how I say a a, a long term. A long-term babyface here, and you got it in Ricky Starks. So then yeah. this is gonna be a time like, <laughs> oh, maybe uh, uh, even though he's gonna take a loss next week, but this is gonna be a time for him to to build up his um his babyface character and be that long-term baby because we we're, we're gonna need those because um uh, when MJ did his first promo and he mentioned a lot of people that including uh, Brian Danielson. Uh, Eddie Kingston, uh, all those people that he mentioned in his first promo, he's gonna have matches for for with those guys during this title run. And I do yeah. believe when we get to Revolution in March, Brian Danielson is gonna be his first um person that he's gonna meet first when he mentioned uh, the, those people because um I do believe that um MJF and Brian Danielson is gonna uh start with the whole thing what happened to William Regal. Uh, last week that's why i feel like that that's going to be the big money uh, main event match at revolution but um we'll get to there but also I'll... ricky stark has two opportunities here right he has the right to the belt and he also has a match for the ring right yeah they did announce that this will be a a winner take all match that not only uh the the person will get the dynamite diamond ring but also the AEW world title so it is a oh, winner take all match. You know what? I wish they would have kept them separate and let Ricky get the ring but lose the belt. Yeah, but um, I feel that the Dynamite Diamond Ring uh, plays in into MJF's character. So, so I understand why they've been making a a winner take all match because uh, the Dynamite Diamond Ring plays into um to, to Ricky's uh to to MJF's character because you know, but I don't MJF- know. MJF last night called it a championship. He said the, the Dynamite Diamond Ring championship. And I agree with that. I think they should hold that ring as a championship title. You know, who is the, who, and let's have matches more frequently for it other than once a year. Um, and then maybe there's something that comes with that ring. Um, but I don't know. I think I think I, if I was booking it, I would have kept it separate. I would have let Ricky get the ring, but lose the belt, and then Ricky can have something that's of Max's that makes Max pissed off that he has it. Um, so, but I get it that the ring is a big part of Max's character and everything like that. But man, that the, the ring is kind of useless if nobody else has it, you know. Um, but I digress. We'll keep going from there. But, um, yeah, I think Ricky Stark is in line to be a really top baby face in the company. Um, and I think MJF did meet his match last night when it comes to the blow of the words. But, um, that spear from Ricky Starks looked incredible. The crowd pop, popped crazy for it. 
So let's see if we can put on a good match and they have chemistry in the ring, but they definitely have chemistry on the mic. Yeah, and um, and if and if Ricky Starts would have win uh next week, he would have been the um the first um African American AEW World Champion. He would have been. Yeah, we're still looking for one, man. So, um, so yeah, I think it was a, that was a really good opening opening to to Dynamite for sure. I was excited. I had to watch it again on the replay um, later on that night. Uh, but it's one of those moments that give you the electricity and the goosebumps of being a wrestling fan. Yeah, and um, before we move on, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the custom? AEW World Title, which uh, MJ calls it the, the Triple B Title. What are your thoughts on that? Looks like beef jerky. I don't know. The the pattern don't come out as clean as I'm pretty sure they wanted it to. But it's nice to see something interesting. I'm glad they didn't do like a whole different title design. You know, like a whole different. It's just a strap that changed. Um, so I'm happy that the the the, the original design is still there. Yeah. And uh, so uh, moving on, John Moxley with Bat Stage. He said, this is all elite wrestling, not a all elite talking. He enjoys fighting. So this week on Rampage, final battle, the Black Bull Comedy Club will bring back what they do best. Moxley will be at ringside tonight to make sure there is no shenanigans. Moxley said, if Hangman Page wants another piece, he knows where to find him. So um, I can definitely see this match Combinate, uh, combinate at um, probably at Revolution if they want to do a long term, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this would be a fun uh, match for sure between these two. It's a fun rivalry. They both like the scrap, so it's just gonna be fun watching these guys beat the crap out of each other, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. So um. We go into our first uh, championship match of the night, which was the current ROH television champion and current reigning TNT champion, Samoa Joe, defending the TNT title against uh, Darby Allin. Now, this was fantastic, as um, Joe was mostly uh, control of Allen in the first half, and then Allen gave uh, mostly control in the second half. I do believe that there was one spot in the match. You know, if you watch... Um, some more Joe matches where um a lot of his opponents try to do a top a top road uh over the top road dive and then like Joe just move out of the way and say like nope I think uh Darby Allen did the best that uh the, this one here. He like nope. Yeah, this match was crazy. Yeah, um, felt really bad for Darby a couple of times. Uh, felt felt like he was taking unnecessary bumps. Uh, the bump that he took when he got hit into the ring post. And did the whole 360 spin out of the ring. Uh, that was crazy. It was fun to look at. Of course, Austin, Texas was on Darby's side. They like the weird. Uh, this did make Joe look like the champion again and like a real force to be reckoned with. He looked at in, in great shape and uh, ready to fight, ready for more. The muscle buster, ah, that had to hurt. Like, say what you want to say about wrestling, how it's staged. But that had to hurt. And, and I know anybody out there wouldn't want to take that bump like Darby took it last night. That had to hurt. Um, so thanks, Darby, for taking that bump for our entertainment. Um, but boy, did that look like it. It was a pain. Uh, but yeah, this match just was really, I think, was built to kind of put Warlow in the babyface position even further, be a savior. Um, but then also make uh, Warlow look even more devastating not one but Samoa Joe uh even look look more devastating than he already is so uh very entertaining moments of professional wrestling Darby I know you're probably in pain this morning yeah but uh but Darby I was built off pain and that's how uh, good of a wrestler is. and uh yeah and I do agree like he definitely made uh Joe look like a monster in this match uh, tonight because that's definitely um, uh, what we need, and uh, this will definitely uh lead into what well, Warlow to be the monster that uh, yeah he was. So you know we're getting uh a Warlow versus some more Joe down the road for the TNT Championship. We don't know when it's gonna be, so they got to build it up slowly to uh to make it uh the believable. So 
we'll see what uh, happens. But um, in the final moments of the of this uh, TNT Championship match, um, Allen hit the over the top uh, over the top stunner and Cole Red, but Joe kicked out. Allen ran into a Yuganati in the corner, but fought out of the corner and tried a coffin drop, falling right into a red naked choke. Allen faded fast. His eyes rolled in the back of his head as the ref called it. After the match, Allen shoved Joe with a headbutt, uh, who headbutted Allen, uh, grabbed his skateboard, hit Allen with a muscle buster on it as the spine of uh, Allen's led on the flesh of the wheel. Yeah, like you said, that would, that did hurt. And um, Joe put on the sleeper again until Warlow made the save and that ran Joe out of there. So um, I bet Allen, which is a Warlow, would have showed up a little bit uh, sooner because um, that, that when he hit the uh, the spine of his head on that wheel, ugh, that was crazy. But uh, but like I said, um, Darby Allen to me is like the modern day version of uh, Mick Foley. He endures pain. Oh, Mick Foley. That's, you said he reminds you of who? A modern day version of Mick Foley, who just uh, takes pain and uh, and just loves it. Oh yeah, facts. Yeah, he does. He does bumps that nobody else wants to do, just like Mick Foley. You're right. you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, like I said, I know he got to be in pain this morning because what he does is just uh, ridiculous sometimes. Uh, first off, Darby is what 125 pounds, 130. You know why are you in the ring with Samoa Joe? What the hell are you doing? You know, fight Serpentico, fight uh. Del, Del Frago, you know, fight these guys. Don't fight some old Joe with the hell. But man, he got he has heart, man. He definitely has heart for this business. So um I wonder, you know, the, the cool thing about like like what happened during that pandemic era is that all these pillars got mentors to work with. Like Jungle Boy got Christian Cage. Um Darby got Steam to work with. I mean, give it that that's just smart, you know. How do you invest in the future of your company as you let these young guys learn from all of these freaking legends, legends? So it's like, it's crazy that um, Darby has all this new kind of information on how to take care of his craft and do his business. Um, but yeah, he still should stop doing these damn matches. <laughs> yep, but it, but it was crazy though. But um, um, after the match, Tony Shabari was backstage with Orange Cassidy and Kip Sabian. Cassidy said, if Sabian wants a title shot at the All Atlantic title, all he had to do was ask. Sabian said he's hurt from the Battle Royal. So Cassidy said for him to pick someone for him to defend the title against him on Rampage. Sabian partnered and walked off. Tony Shabari made the match official. So he has the, the, the power now. And we'll get to that, uh, that person who will be facing... Uh, Orange Cassidy on Rampage in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, we had a video package showing the highlights for Chris Jericho versus Claudio Casanovi, uh, which is going to be the the main event for the final battle for the RH um man, title. And then after that, we get into the tag team match with um, the Blackpool Combat Club members Claudio Claudio and Willa Yuta versus the RH Pure Champion Daniel Garcia and Jay Cater of the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. Uh, this was your standard tag, tag team matchup with the JSS controlling the entire break and then afterwards the, the BCC firing back when they returned. There were some clinky spots uh, towards the end, but at the end of it, uh, it was uh, still a good tag team matchup. Definitely, definitely. Um, this match was uh, pretty entertaining for me. See. I'm kind of looking at my notes here. About it, like this is one of the. I'm not gonna lie, this match. I think only because I kind of seen these guys so much. Um, I just I'm losing interest. I'm losing interest in this, in this rivalry. I've seen these guys fight so much. Um, I think the best part of it was uh, just kind of seeing Jake Hager and um, you know Claudio in there. Also, what was really weird was seeing John Moxley come down the ramp. That was odd. Um, usually he come through the crowd, but it was, you know, weird to see him come down the ramp um, you know, during the intro. 
Uh, but he was out there cheerleading and, and doing everything. And I think, I guess they need him out there so they can set up um, that promo with uh, William Regal. Yeah. And um, uh, la- la- like you said, man, like this this rivalry between the Blackpool Comic Club and the Jericho Creed Society, it got to come to an end. This has been going on for too long. Like it's this so dry, bro. Yeah, this should have ended like at blood and guts. But blood um, and guts, right? <laughs> yeah, but um, I will say, I do appreciate the um what Chris Jer- what Chris Jericho is doing with the uh, RH uh, World Championship. I'm okay with that. It looks uh, uh the, he has he has a good pretty good title run, but yeah, but yeah, but um, like I said, this rivalry got to come to an end at final yes. battle. After that, I don't want to see no more. All right. Yes. But, I mean, um, maybe they kept it going for so long so Claudio can be in a group of people that he's used to working with, um, and with some new kids as well. Because maybe this is more beneficial for like Garcia and Yuta. Uh, to be around these guys, uh, but yeah, this rivalry needs to come, especially like you know the the Ricky Starks and MJF thing really reinvigorated me as far as like looking for new rivalries. So now I just want to see new. I don't want to see no more of this. So this match, I'm not gonna lie, I was in my phone, I was checking my emails on Facebook, looked up, seeing Claudio doing a swing, was like, okay, cool, 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 and then kind of went back. The crowd was really into it, which is good. These are like some of their biggest names, um, some of their biggest names in the company all at once. So, you know, it's definitely worth looking. But I missed overseeing these guys fight. So looking forward to this rivalry being over soon. But I think the most interesting part is what happened after the match. Yeah, we'll get to that. And uh, I'll explain that in a, in a, right now. But um, at the end of the match, um, Claudio hit the home run uppercut on Hager uh, uh, to, to win. And then after the match, Tony Schiavone got in the ring with the Blackpool Combat Club and threw in a pre-recorded promo tape that he did with Royal Regal two weeks ago. Regal said they will only see this if something, be- something bad happened to him. Regal said he did what he did to show Mosley, Casanoli, and Danielson why they don't need him and can teach Yuta to be the best wrestler in the world like themselves. Hopefully, Mosley understands, as he had ca- calculated man. R- Regal did what he did so that uh, they always stay one step ahead and keep their eyes in the back of their head. Regal said he's Blackpool Combat Cop until the day he dies and walked off. And he also said he gave um, MJF the, the, the world title because of what everything that's been going on uh, in the buildup leading to John Mossy and MJF at, 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 at full gear, but there's some people say that when you when you dance with the devil, you, uh, which is MJF, you're gonna pay the price. But at the end of the day, William Regal is the villain of all villains, and he did say that he gave the world title to MJF, but now he has responsibilities. That people is going to be coming after him, so that's a that's what he said after um uh, he walked off. So there was a lot of confusions here, but um you could definitely see that um that he's leaving AEW and soon going back to to WWE. Now that Triple H is in charge right now, so that's where they're going off of the, with with there. And um, Shivani asked Mossy his thoughts. He was still confused here. But after the other uh, promo, yeah, he was uh, he was skeptical about it. But he said, Casanoli and Yuta live and breathe for professional wrestling. Final battle, the feud with, with the Jericho Appreciation Society will end. Moxie said he will challenge any wrestler in the world on, on Rampage. So, my question to you, what are your thoughts on this promo with Rhea Regal? And do you think this is a loss for uh, AEW with um, possibly William Regal going back to Triple H and, and the WWE? Um, uh, yeah, so this is my thoughts on the whole situation. Um, I'm glad that William Regal is a professional. He was able to give this final piece of his story, explanation why 
he will not be kind of coming back or not returning pretty much. Um, so the way they did it was right enough. Um, I understand why William Regal is going back. You know, when Vince kind of punished Triple H for losing the Wednesday Night Wars, um, he really did just crumble everything that Triple H built, you know, that he built, right? He just crumbled it. He just demolished it. Got rid of the look, got rid of the brand, got rid of everything that was resident, you know, that was that was even familiar to the black and gold NXT, which is the black and gold NXT was an NXT that I loved. I love the Triple H NXT. Uh, you know, we went to, went to the shows at Full Sail, Trico. Um, that was my jam. But you know, once it got onto TV and it was competing. It had to be everything was Vince's way. And that's when everything started to change. And it didn't feel the same. And then AEW came at that right time because, oh, here's the matches that I miss watching on like, you know, on their, on their, um, uh, yeah, what's their pay-per-view? What's NXT pay-per-views uh, thing? Their, their pay-per-views. You, you mean like TakeOver? That trouble? Yeah, their TakeOvers. TakeOvers was always hype. Takeovers was always hyper than whatever show was coming on that Sunday, whatever pay per view was on that Sunday. You know, Takeover was always the better show. Um, so AEW came in at the right time because now here's that Takeover vibe, here's that Takeover feeling, here's here's what we liked about the Black and Gold NXT. Um, so it came at the right time. So I definitely understand why William Regal would be okay with going back. Because William Regal was fired just to punish Triple H. You see what I'm saying? He was fired and humiliated by the company and by Vince just to prove a point to Triple H. So I see why William Regal is going back. It was no hard, you know, no hard feelings between Regal and Triple H. And now that Vince is completely out of the picture, now they can really do what they wanted to do from the first place. Now you know, maybe that takeover feeling comes back eventually. You know, let's see. But um, if it's not back already, I haven't watched this team forever. Um, so I don't know if that takeover feeling, the black and gold 2018 feeling is back. Um, but anyway, so I definitely understand why William Regal is going back. Um, because who 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 could have foreseen Vince getting in how much trouble he got in and stepping away from the company? That all hit us like out of nowhere. It was like, wait, what happened? Now, what's happening? That all happened so fast. Who could have foreseen that? So I think um, I definitely understand. And I definitely understand why anybody who left the company because of how Vince was running it may want to return back to the company and see how new management is doing it. That's definitely understandable. Like These guys are free agents. These guys are employees of companies. So that's just the same if you was working for some place and you had a crappy boss, but you like the job and you like the people and you like the pay, but just your management sucked. And then you leave and now somebody tells you, hey, that manager is no longer there and it's much better now. And the money is just as good now. And everyone's the same. It's just better management. You might say like, dang, I like this place where I'm working now, but you know, I might go check that place back out. No hard feelings. Um, so I kind of see what's happening here, you know, and that's, it's a part of it, but you're going to also get these people. That's the thing about AEW is that they do have pillars who are AEW originals. The claim is a team that can keep helping this company go forward. Jungle Boy, Darby Allen. Um, I'm not even going to say MJF because of the bidding war of 2024, but Sammy Guevara, all these guys, Chris Jericho is dedicated to it. John Moxley is dedicated to it. So you got all these guys in this company who are definitely bleeding the AEW colors, and they all understand. All these wrestlers understand when one leaves the company to go. It may suck. I mean, I see this guy no more, but they're still friends in real life. You know, they still can call each other and have those conversations, and they go to each other's weddings and go to each other's kids' birthday parties. They have each other. They talk. You know, so it's not the end of the world. It's just like, okay, man, I understand. You got to go make money somewhere else. So. I'm not going to buy into the wrestling politics of it. I definitely understand why William Regal wanted to go back. It was not his fault why he got fired in the first place. I will say this. When we get to 2023, 
in January. I feel like it's going to be a huge reset, not only for AEW and for, for, for WWE as well, because just like Rui Regal, there's still some uh, uh, people on the roster, AEW roster, that want to go back to um to WWE because it was real real close with Triple H, but um they still but they still under contract, so they have to wait until their their contract expired to see if they if they want to stay or want to go. But there are some other uh, other people that that recently has recently been returning to WWE WWE that's not either on the contract with AEW or has recently been on impact, but just want to leave and go back. So, yeah. So, I think it's going to be a huge reset for both companies because think about it this way. In January, you got the Royal Rumble. This is going to be um, the Royal Rumble, the, the first Royal Rumble under the leadership of Triple H. So, you know there's going to be a lot of returns, especially in, um, in the Royal Rumble match. You're going to expect to see a lot of returns. And then same thing goes for... Um, for AEW, they're trying to forget all the the, the shenanigans with the uh, CM Punk and the, and the Elite stuff. They want to get get rid of all of that. They're like, they're, it's a huge reset. You got uh, you got your your originals as your your world champion, your women's world champion, and your and your tag team champions. So the uh, I feel like twenty twenty three will be a huge start for both companies, and we can finally. Get that um, uh, war for war between both companies uh, because us wrestling fans, we just want to see great wrestling. We want to see good competition between both companies. So, twenty twenty three, we're gonna it's gonna be a huge re uh, re reset. We just have to wait and see uh, how how everything is gonna go. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, I may be even be interested to like start peeking out WWE and see what they're doing. Um, and see if some of the stuff have changed and um, see where it's going. 2022 has definitely been a transformation year, a transformative year for both of these companies. Um, I mean, everything that happened with CM Punk and the Elite, everything that happened with Vince, Stephanie being CEO, I think 2023 will be the year where it's like, okay, all this is real. Uh, we are in this seat. What are we doing for this year? And I'm sure both of these companies already have plans for next year. Exactly how they're going to start. You got AEW going over to the UK, which they are dominating from um, from the numbers. Um, they're dominating in the UK. So they got their first UK show. I mean, this company is still expanding and going forward and, and, uh, and branching out. Um, I think good storytelling is what people are looking for. So more new rivalries, like the one we saw start last night, um, will be the way to kind of keep this company going. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait for uh, the new year, and I can't wait to see what both companies has in store and, and, uh, for the for the new year. And um, so um, uh, moving forward, uh, we got the House of Black video showing Malachi Black says anyone who has an issue what they done in weeks and weeks will face them at next week. Now, with with the House of Black returning, I feel that that whoever wins the um the best out of seven series between the um the, the Death Triangle and the Elite will probably face the, uh, the the House of Black. Now, can you imagine if the Elite wins the uh the best out of seven series? Can you imagine that we get Kenny Omega? versus Malachi Black, and then the Young Bucks versus Brody King and Buddy Matthews. I mean, that's a huge possibility. Or maybe um, Pat versus the um, Malachi Black, and then the Lucha Bros versus um, Brody King and, and Buddy Matthews. What do you think? That's how, that's how I feel about the House of Black. I think uh, whoever wins the, uh, the trio championships, I think the House of Black is going to get first crack. I think so, too. I think they're building up to that rivalry between the House of Black and the Elite, uh, which would be a hell of a rivalry. Yes, I want to see more of that on my team. Um, so, yeah, I think for sure, I think the Elite is going to win the belts back oh, um, at the end of everything. All set is done. And then the House of Black will attack them shortly after. 
so we can start a build between those two guys. And they are all elite athletes. Um, and it's a great matchup because um, the thing about Death Triangle versus the Elite, they're all very similar. The thing about House of Black compared to Elite, you got Brody King. You got, but you know, you got Matthews. You have, um, you know, you have these guys that is a difference maker, and and and, and how the, they would fight. You know, Death Triangle. You have Malachi Black, who is, you know, ridiculous. So um, it's definitely a different matchup. And I think I would like to see that intro more often. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that rivalry when it starts. Yep, that's a huge possibility. But, um, yeah, they will be at action uh, next week at Winter is Coming. Who are their opponents? We don't know. We'll find out uh, next week. But um, after that promo, uh, Tony Schiavone had a pre-recorded interview with the AEW Women's World Champion, J.B. Hader, who said she finally has a chance to speak. Shivani asked her thoughts on the uh, Carter Sheeta versus the Bunny on Rampage for the Rita Dinner Wave uh, title. Hader said she, uh, she will have a close eye on this match and grants the winner of this match the next, uh, the next shot at her title. Now, do we really see the bunny winning this match? I don't think so. So no. this kind of gives away that we know that her car she is gonna win, and that this is gonna be set up for uh her Sheeta and Hater uh for the for the next title match. So that's pretty much a spoiler there. Yeah, I mean, this is just, you know, a nice little match. Get it done with. Um uh, she needs she needs somebody to fight. Let's put her in. Yep, that's all we can say about that. And um, we go to this trios match with uh, the TBS champion, Jay Cargill, the Layla Gray and Red Velvet of the Baddies versus Sky, Sky Blue, Madison Rain, and former Baddie, Kiara Hogan. Well, what's much can say? Um, Cargill was, in, was not really in this match a lot. She was just there to pick up the pieces. In the last minute of the match, uh, just just to get the win for uh, for a team. Now, let me just say this: um, I feel the TBS Championship on Jay is kind of held in her back. Now, the winning streak, good, but I feel she needs to take a loss here because this uh, this has been going on too long. There was even a spot um, at the uh, at the end of the match. I feel that the baddies are going to turn on Jade. That's what I feel like. And I don't know when Bow Wow is going to come through. And uh, he said he was coming, but I don't know when. I don't know when they're going to start this uh, rivalry between Jade and Bow Wow. I don't know what's going to happen there. I don't know what the plan is. But, yeah, that's all much I can say about that. That's all I'm about Jade. Yeah, I definitely understand. Um, I mean... I say let her get to a hundred wins, bro. I am such a fan of Jade. I know she's green and la 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 la. But boy, she looks like money. She just has an image about her. She has a presence about her. Uh, um, you know, I just yeah, I think she's money, man. And as long as it keeps working, you know, why 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 are we um why are we trying to change things up? It's working. Uh, this whole thing with Bow Wow is uh, a little odd, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm on a different path, man. I think I think Jade is doing the best she can with the with the with the limited resource, not resources, but like the limited time she had um, doing this. So, um, but yeah, I mean, is I think she just needed a really good new challenger. Like a, a real rivalry that goes more than just one match. Um, so I think when we get someone like that, that'll be the best thing. Yeah, put her in the ring with uh with Britt Breaker. Put her in the ring with uh Tony Storm. Give her like give her some real competition. Like this title ring has been like blend. Like give her some real competition. Yeah, she needs some real. Maybe they need to bring in somebody else, or even like, um, you know, they tried making 
they try making her a heel. Um, I mean, they making her a baby face with Nyla and everything. So I don't know. They need to do something to kind of give her some new competition. That um, some new competition that's going to really push her to her limit. Yeah, like they better do something because it's really getting bland. That's all I can say about that. But um, uh, moving for, uh, moving on. Tony Schiavone was backstage with Sharia, who only got a few words in before Brit Breaker interrupt. Baker gave Sharia tickets for the Kia forms for the January 12th edition of Dynamite. I think that's uh, that's in LA. And um, Baker made the challenge for a tag team match between her and Jamie Hayter against Sharia and a partner of their choosing. Now, this is where the rumor comes in. Uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've been hearing rumors that. Soraya might bring AJ Lee into AEW. Now, I don't know how this true is, but I can definitely see that happy because Soraya and AJ Lee do have history when they was in WWE, when they was fighting over the uh, the once Divas Championship, and um, there was once uh, there was once Frenemies, there was once tag team together. They even beat the Bella Twins at WrestleMania 31 back in uh, 2015 so um yeah i can definitely uh see that happening i don't know if that's true or not but um but this definitely will give uh a definitely shine on that dynamite especially uh, that dynamite will be in los angeles just so they gotta get some get some big matches on on that on that dynamite so i don't know what do you think who do you think soraya will pick as a tag team partner who do you think soraya will yeah, I really don't know. Maybe someone that she has some history with or some new girl, like, like you know, maybe they want to bring, like, Sky Blue in to kind of help her. You see, they got Madison Rain. The same thing they did with, um, like, Christian Cage and Steen with uh, the one. I see they're doing the same thing with Sky Blue because Madison Rain is next to her every time, you know? So, um, um, I'm not sure exactly who's going to bring her. It's a little bit of a mystery. Um, so we'll have to just stay looking because she's so new into the company. I don't know who she has like any kind of ties with. Anything. So it, it might be a surprise visit. Maybe it's Alicia Fox. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what the partner is. So, um, but this definitely continued the rivalry with. Um, I feel down the road that Soraya might get a uh, might get a world uh, women's world title match against Jamie Hader. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with this, but we'll see uh, how uh, where it goes from there. So, um, so yeah, in Los Angeles, this will be Soraya's uh, second match ever in AEW. Who's going to be a partner? I don't know. We just had to wait and see. And um, uh, uh to come that January 12th edition and and Di- uh, of Dynamite in Los Angeles. Now, before we get into the um to the main event, we got a lineups for for Rampage. Um, Orange Cassidy defends the All Atlantic Championship against the Kid Sabres uh, 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 choosing. Her car Shear defends the Regionaire Wave uh, title against the Bunny, and the winner gets the AEW Women's uh, Title match. We'll hear from Ruby Soil and Ty Mello. Lee Moriarty and W Mercy will be in tag team matching. Athena uh, addresses um, Mercedes Martinez, uh, the head of their um, RH. Women's War title match at, at, final, at final battle. John Mossy will face a Ken Sonora Titushi in there. And then we got our lineups for our Ring of Honor final battle, which will be this Saturday. And let me tell you, this Saturday will be uh, hectic. You got three events. You got the RRH um, uh, uh, final battle. You got NST um, a deadline. And then you also got uh, uh, UFC... Uh, 2082. So that Saturday is going to be head day. But um wow. let's, yeah, let's get into the but, but let's get to the lineups. Um you got Chris Jericho versus Ca- Claudio Casanoe for the uh, RH War title and if uh, Claudio loses, he must join the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. And then you, you got um uh, Daniel Garcia defends the uh, RH Television World title against uh Willa Yuta. Mercedes Martinez versus Athena for the RH Women's World title. Samoa Joe versus Juice, Juice Robinson for the RH uh, television title. 
Swerve in Our Glory takes on Shane Taylor and J.D. Uh, Griffin. And then Dalton Castle and the boys defend the R.A. Sitzman tag team titles against Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony. And, uh, and there was one more match that was announced for Final Battle. And we'll get to that in a second. But um, let's talk about the, uh, the, the main event here, which was uh, the Acclaim versus um, FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championships. And let me just say, this was a phenomenal main event between both teams, looking fantastic in this one. So, and the finish was really uh, a flashy pin as Wheeler was simply got caught at the end. But, um, but, uh, but, yeah, but in the end, uh, this was a fantastic main event. Man, this was exciting. This is also another one, um, another one of those matches that was like reminding me why I love this company and how hyped the crowd was behind everything. Um, yeah, this was a really good match, really fun between these two teams, different styles. Bowens was really the MVP of last night to me. Um, um, he's really the worker of the, of the team. Um, I'm starting to notice that he kind of goes in and does a lot of the flashy uh, wrestling technical stuff and cast it, you know, um, um, Platinum Max is just kind of more the muscle big. He does the mic drop. Um, but Bones is really the worker out of this group, I think. I think he puts in a lot of work in that ring um, to make these matches what they are. Um, and that kind of showed last night. FTR again looking incredible and just being the, the awesome team that they are. I mean, I don't really can say any more about them. Every time they get in a ring, it's going to be a great match, regardless, uh, no matter who they're in there with or entertaining. Um, but I like it when I see there was a great moment towards the end, and I won't give away the whole ending, but a great moment towards the end where it looked like uh, Max had slapped um, Cash in the face. And then after that, it was just a, a fury of. Um, Lariats, you know, that looked like devastating. Uh, so I think that was a receipt on his part. But um, yeah, this is a really, just a really great match. And I, I'll say this is one of those matches you can put on for anybody and they'll be entertained. Yeah, um, absolutely. So um, in the final moments uh, uh, in the match, FTR went for the power plex as Willard made the tag, but boys sent uh, Harward to the floor. Bowens hits the arrival on Wheeler, 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 but Caster missed the mic drop. Bowens was flattened by a slam out where Wheeler, who turned Castle inside out with a lariat for another close two. Wheeler hit another home run lariat and a powerbomb stack, but Caster rolled through it, put the legs, and got the flash pin uh, to retain. Now, post match, Wheeler was kind of frustrated, but at the end, they still shook hands and scissored in respect as the ass boys were shown on the big screen called FTR trash and had a Christmas card in stacks uh, in the um in the stocking saying them boys aka the Briscoes have challenged them to a dog collar match a double dog collar match for the RH uh, tag team titles at final battle this Saturday for the RH uh, tag team titles now, let me just say this uh, before I get into the um, FTR versus Briscoes. Now, why do we need the uh, uh, the ass boys to tell us this match? Now, I understand that the um, the cable network has uh, their own agendas against the uh, against the Briscoes. Like, if they didn't have this agenda, like the Briscoes could have came out there, um, attack FTR, and say, "Oh, you and me." One more time, double dark collar match and final battle. Like they, uh, that could have happened to give it a, a little nice uh, buildup, which they're going to be their third and final match at final battle. But instead, you need to bring the, the ass boys to tell us that this match is happening. Like that was stupid the, on the end. But I will say, oh my goodness. Like if you didn't think their last two matches was great, oh my goodness. Just I imagine how great right. and brutal that this third match is going to be. Now, if you would have asked hey, who I think will win this match, um, 
I don't see uh, FTR going 3-0 and against the Briscoes. I think this could be the one that the Briscoes might get their win here and become the new champions. But I don't know. Any day that can happen. So what are your thoughts on this announcement with FTR versus the Briscoes 3 being a double dark collar match? Yeah, so I don't think it'd be the best way. Of course, they wanted a, they wanted the Briscoes to obviously do that. That'd be the best way to do it. They'll get a huge pop if the Briscoes came out on AEW television. And from the reports, it seemed like they tried to do everything they could to get these guys um, to do it, but unfortunately, it just won't happen. You know, when you can't do it, you can't do it, and it's no fault to Tony. You know, the Briscoes made controversial content. Uh, comments in the back in, in, in the past and this is the result of that you know you made controversial remarks and everyone agrees with this person don't want you on the network because of them so I mean we can't tell them what to do with their business so it is what it is um, but of course it'd be nice to have them come out and say everything and do all this stuff and you know, that of course they would love that, but can it can it happen? Um, so the ass boys have been a thorn in um FTR's side. So why not be kind of like a Grinch and try to give them some presence? And the presence is a double dog collar match. So it is what it is. Can't get around it. They try, doesn't work. It is what it is. Yeah. So um, like I said. We didn't expect to see uh, a third match happening, but it's going to happen because um, I still got uh, their first match um, that they had on my top 10 list of the top 10 best matches of, of 2022. So, um, yeah, uh, 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 RH Final Battle looking good. So um, would you pay $39.99 for, 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 the, for the event on Saturday? Would you pay thirty? I would go to it if I was in the city where it was at, but I probably won't order the pay per view. Yeah, but uh, Saturday is gonna be hectic. You got final battle, you got NST deadline, and then you got uh, a UC a UFC on that Saturday. So Saturday is gonna be hectic, and um, and then lastly for uh, we only have th- three things announced for next week's um Dynamite well, Witcher is coming. Um, the House of Black will be in action. Uh, we got match four of the best of seven series between Death Triangle and the Elite. Uh, the score right now, Death Triangle is two up against the Elite, oh, two and one against the Elite. So um, can the Elite tie it up next week? And we'll see. And then the main event, MJF versus Ricky Stars. In a way to take all match, the winner will get not only get the, gets the Dynamite Diamond Ring, but the AEW World Championship. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Um, again, I think they should have kept it separate. It would have been better if one of them just got the ring and the other one gets the belt, but whatever. Because now when you put both of them together, it's obvious that um, Ricky Starks is not going to win it. You know what I mean? It's just kind of obvious now. So, um, but I'm still looking forward to this this whole rivalry that's starting. So this is the beginning of a rivalry that I'm going to enjoy for the next couple of months. Then, you know, let it be, but I'm here for it. I'm looking for a new rivalry to get me. Um, yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to a new rivalry to get me all excited. Yep. And then um, after uh, winter is coming, uh, mostly all the episodes for Dynamite will be nothing but specials for, for this month, uh, the December, because you got winter is coming uh, next week. Then the following week, you got the holiday bash. And then the, uh, the end of uh, December, then you got the, the, the New Year smash. So the, this the, this month of December is going to be nothing but specials uh, for Dynamite. And, of course, Red Page 2. Red Page 2. Red Page 2. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of exciting wrestling coming up this weekend. That's for damn sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, um, like I said before, 
January. Going to be a huge reset, not only for AEW, but for WWE uh, as well. And we cannot wait to see what both uh, companies uh, have in store. But um, yeah, other than that, great Dynamite show uh, to build up for Winter is Coming next week and also a good go-home show for Final Battle uh, this Saturday. And um, uh, before we wrap up, anything else you want to plug in? Uh, no, not at the moment, man. Uh, I am working still on empathy. So guess what, Trico? I got to the very end scene of empathy editing, and my laptop pretty much exploded on me. Um, it just stopped working. So it put me back a couple of weeks. But today, after this, I'm going to buy my new laptop. Um, so I'm going to get back doing it so we can get this movie finished because it needs to be finished. Yeah. But um, we don't want to rush the, the, through the editing because um, we want to make it look at, as good as possible. So oh, big to... facts. Big facts. Yeah. Big facts. Yeah, man. So I'm excited to get him back on it. Uh, but yeah, that's about that. My, if you hear my phone in the background, as my wife texts me, see if I'm ready to go because we're about to go head over to Best Buy and come back and start getting to it man so uh yeah this is a really good episode of dynamite this is an episode that kind of reinvigorated me for aew because now we got some new um so now we got some new rivalries some new matches that's came up it's been a little stale let's end this jas and blackpool combat club regal isn't even there anymore why is it even called the blackpool combat club anymore um, so maybe a new faction, maybe they throw away the BCC and come up with something new. Who knows? But I'm going to keep watching to find out and we'll be here to talk to you guys about it. But, uh, they can still keep the name okay, because, um, William Ringo is the founder, but, um, John Mossy and, um, and Brian Danielson, they are the leaders. So now it's up to, um, to, John Mossy and Brian Danielson, which is the they are the uh, the veterans and the leaders of the locker room to um to manage uh Casanova and and really Uta. but uh but yeah like you said the um, Black Blue Comic Club and Jericho Appreciation got to end this Saturday because if it don't we'll be pissed but um uh, other than that um that that's your updates on um on Empty uh we will we'll give you more updates soon. As the as the uh, as the week comes by, because uh, we're still in post post production, and we'll give you more updates on the, as soon as we can. But um, uh, other than that, um, this is uh, he is Leland, and I'm Trico, and we'll see y'all soon, y'all. Peace.